Hey everybody, I wanted to show you uh, something that's been going on with the Tesla. I think uh, after a drive the other day, something got stuck because we're having like a squeaking noise that's coming from it. So I wanted to, you know, troubleshoot it in case it can help somebody out there. I want to be able to help them as well. So I'm going to show you uh, where the noise is coming from, or at least where I think the noise is coming from. Okay, move the steering wheel back and forth. So I'm taking the Tesla in today to get serviced for, as you can imagine, this sound, right? Um, but I wanted to see how Navigate on Autopilot would handle this roundabout. Let's see if it'll actually go through it. Um, I know it's uh, gotten really, really close in some iterations. Um, I just want to see if it'll actually take this. So let's see what it does. It's probably going to pull me out. Oh, almost. It literally almost did it though, right there. We're here at the Tesla Service Center. Um, one cool thing about when you check in on the app, um, you check in on the app, you tell them a little bit about what you think you're having go on with your car. In my case, it was the squeaking noise. So I told them the front right, so the passenger side of the car squeaking. I'm thinking it's going to fall under the warranty. That's my hope at least. And that's the plus of getting a used Tesla through the proper channels, giving Tesla a call, making sure everything transfers over properly. The app automatically checks you in, says, hey, thanks for bringing in your Tesla by even if you're you know, bringing it in during the day. So don't worry about if you want to bring it in earlier. Some things to be aware of when doing service on your Tesla is there's probably not a lot of locations for you to do the service on the Tesla. So in Utah, we have one location. Um, I think the next location it showed was Las Vegas. Now we have a couple dealerships, but only one service location. So don't be surprised if you put in for an urgent request and it takes like two weeks. I put in my request probably a week and a half ago and they're just barely getting me in today. There's tons and tons of different Teslas that are at this location already, so I'm sure they get slammed all the time. So make sure that you have the patience. If you're gonna own a Tesla, it's gonna require patience unless you know somebody that can work on it. You know, maybe maybe you live near rich rebuilds and you can find other people that'll service Teslas, but uh, for for me, I've got to take it to this location. The other thing is be courteous to the staff. I mean, they're working during COVID. Uh, it's been hectic for them, I'm sure. Uh, a lot of the things aren't probably running as smooth as they would like it either. And so just make sure you have patience for them. They're going to work on your car as fast as they can. Now, uh, like I said, I'm hoping mine's under warranty. If not, I don't really care. I need to, you know, get it worked on. The other thing that they're going to want to try and sell me is tires, but uh, Laura's goal and my goal is to uh, live out until the, the winter and just buy them then. Now I'm waiting for my loaner car, which I'm hoping is a Model X, a Model Y, I haven't driven those two. I've dro driven the S the last time I was getting hardware three put in this car. And so I got an idea of what I liked in that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to showing you a video of whatever loaner car I get. Let me take you through that process of dropping the car off and you know working with the service center so far my experiences have been pretty good other than you know i'm not a big fan of getting uber credits when they do give uber credits but uh in this case i was able to talk to them and they were able to you know work it out so i can get a loaner car okay so they did give me a loaner car they gave me a p85 uh so the model s it's red has a brown interior. I'm sure you can see this in the background. Um, the only problem with this, and if you're a Tesla owner out here, I would want to know if you've had the same thing happen. I've got like a neutered one. So I swear it's in valet mode because it won't go over 85 miles an hour and uh, it's stuck in chill. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. See? So I can't select any of that. 
I would say for me though, I actually prefer the Model 3 over a lot of different variations. Um, Model X I haven't driven in. I was kind of hoping to get that, but it made sense why they weren't going to give me one. They're like, we have four to give as rentals and uh, we give them to people who bring in Model Xs. And so um, I do have this Model S. Um, hopefully I texted the guy and asked him if he would unlock it from valet mode so that I can actually change things around. Um, because I do want to, you know, take it on the freeway, show you guys some of that. Uh, it, it accelerates like a normal car when it's in chill mode. I don't know if you guys have experienced that before, but it's, it's really, really slow to accelerate. The other thing I noticed is, uh, it needs some updates. So I'm connected to the Wi-Fi and downloading the updates for them. All right, so here's the Model S that I've got. Um, one of the things I noticed right out of the gate in filming with the GoPro right now is that um, it's harder to see out the windshield because the, the Model 3, if you notice, the mirror is a lot higher. And uh, there are certain quirky things that I keep forgetting about. Like if I hit the blinker, since it's a, a real blinker, it clicks all the way down. Um, I then have to unclick it again to get it to stop blinking right with the uh, Model 3. Depending on the situation, it'll turn itself off, but it's more of just that that paddle click, which was hard to get used to, but now I'm used to that. And uh, obviously, you know, you have the bigger screen. Now with this one, I'm really disappointed. I, I wish I would have gotten footage the first time I got a Model S because I actually had ludicrous mode. The Model 3 stays in the lane a lot better. Uh, when I was driving through some of the windy construction road, um, it actually went over into the other lane, made me a little bit paranoid that I was going to hit the person in the other lane. The other thing that I've noticed with it is uh, the lane change, and uh, it could be just the like neutered settings since I can't customize any of this stuff. Um, the, it doesn't, it's not like changing lanes like Mad Max does, and I really like the Mad Max lane change. That's a preference thing. Um, and then obviously, you know, you've got the other display that's right here, right in front of you, that you have the controls. Um, having a Model 3, I could do without that. I think the one big screen is good enough for me. And obviously these things are all just my preference. And um, then the other part of it, you can't see it down here, but the little down part of this, I, I think it's different on the new P100Ds, but it's just like a bowling alley. I know people make different inserts you can put for those. I would definitely recommend getting those inserts if you owned one of these. It's definitely a, a much bigger car. You can fill that when you're in it. Obviously it's supposed to be a bigger car. Um, and so it has a completely different fill. You also have all the knobs on it. You can change, you know, um, tracks and stuff from, from here. You can with the little knobs, but I love how simplistic they made the Model 3. Now this screen is awesome in the sense that you can have different things up in it at the same time. Um, like I like that it puts that up and you still have this, but this, this doesn't have the update that does the side view camera. So um, I might update this for them and then try it out again. Hey everybody, I'm back in my Tesla Model 3. Now it ended up being the upper control arm. I had the lower control arm replaced, which was under warranty as well. So the service process was actually really fast. Uh, it was a 24 hour turnaround. They checked it in at three o'clock. I actually got there at two, but they checked it in at three. And then getting it back, I got the text today at about three o'clock. So about a 24 hour turnaround. Um, they do an awesome job there. I really like the tech that works with me. I don't know if they assign them to certain Teslas or if I just have gotten him every single time, but I think I've brought it in uh, three or four different times, including the Hardware 3, and it's been the same guy. I don't think I've had this car long enough to know uh, what it's supposed to feel like all the time. So uh, getting it back and having it be a lot stiffer, a lot smoother, autopilot being more responsive, not as wavy and uh, able to maintain the lane a lot better. Uh, really excited to have the car back, really excited to do videos in it again. Uh, I really, really missed having it. And so hopefully this video was helpful though. I was way off on what I thought it was gonna be. So uh, maybe, you know, not listen to that, but uh, sure hope you guys are doing great and uh, we'll see you in the next video.